Corey Heim gets hit with a penalty for wrecking Carson Hosevar, and did a NASCAR official tell Ross Chastain to go easy on the championship four? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Coming to you from a, a cute little Airbnb here in Alabama. <laughs> Just passing through, but these days I don't travel anywhere without my microphone, camera, editing software. It drives my family and friends crazy. But speaking of driving, I've been road tripping the past day or so, and I like to listen to a lot of different NASCAR podcasts to pass the time. Door Bumper Clear made some interesting uh, accusations this week? NASCAR responded. We'll get to that in just a moment. First, though, some basic news. The Phoenix off-season test is officially scheduled for December 5th and 6th. Here's a post from reporter Bob Pachris. He mentions Corey LaJoy said on his podcast that he will be among the six drivers at the NASCAR December 5th and 6th Phoenix test. They will test various underbodies and also transaxle to eliminate shifting. Will be two cars from each manufacturer, one chosen by the manufacturer, one chosen by NASCAR. Another important off-season test to try and improve the, the short oval racing product. Hey, I applaud them for trying to get rid of the shifting, although between the new transaxle, many of these other experiments that have failed, like the up-down splitter, these tests are getting expensive. At what point do we just say, hey, let's up the horsepower? I know that might be expensive as well for all the OEMs to update some of their parts and pieces to accommodate that extra horsepower, but at some point we're just, it still feels like we're spinning our gears. We're running in circles, chasing our tail, <laughs> insert metaphor here. I'm glad NASCAR is still trying, but man, there's only so much you can do to the arrow of these cars at short tracks. Goodyear, bringing a different tire to the championship race this past weekend. That's a good step in the right direction. Maybe finally we're starting to inch towards that finish line, but it has taken a long time to get here. The next gen car is now two years old, officially. The short track racing was maybe a little better this year, but still not where it needs to be. And NASCAR and the teams and the manufacturers still seem reluctant to pull that final lever that likely would make the biggest difference, at least according to many drivers. Anyway, moving on, let's talk conspiracy theories. And this is a popular one. Ever since the Championship 4 was introduced, going back to 2014, it's been theorized by many that the drivers are told to back off, to not race the championship drivers hard at all. From 2014 to 2022, the champion also won the final race. And last year, I think folks were scratching their heads when they saw that Ryan Blaney clearly had a faster car than his teammate Joey Logano, but appeared to back off in the closing laps. Didn't want to force the issue or risk anything. This year's championship race went a bit differently. For the first time since this format was introduced, a non playoff driver won the finale, Ross Chastain. And I would argue for the first time maybe ever, a non-playoff driver raced the championship four extremely hard, that being Ross Chastain. Now, I don't believe he ever crossed the line if it's not like he ever you know, door slammed Blaney or ran him wide or bumped him or anything. He just you know, arrow blocked him. He used that invisible air bubble to his advantage. But on door bumper clear this week, uh, spotter Brett Griffin said that a NASCAR official went to Ross Chastain's spotter after he got bumped by Ryan Blaney that one time and allegedly chastised the one team for racing Blaney so hard, or at least that's what Brett Griffin sort of theorized. Here's the short clip from this most recent episode of Door Bumper Clear. When Blaney hit Ross Chastain, Ross Chastain's spotter was fussed at by a NASCAR official. Really? Yes. The, the official went down there and said, what are you doing? And the guy's like, what am I doing? I'm trying to win a race. But he didn't want Ross Chastain to be, I don't know, racing, I guess, Blaney that hard. That is a very serious accusation because effectively, he's suggesting that a NASCAR official told a competitor to back off, to not try as hard to win the race. And that's not right. That's obviously not a good thing. It undermines and questions the integrity of this entire sport, or at the very least, the championship race. 
there's 36 cars out there. I know the focus is on the championship four, but those other 32 teams paid all that money, spent all that time, energy, and, and resources to bring their cars to this race as well. They deserve just as much of a shot to win the race as the championship four does. So this is a very serious accusation, in my opinion. Now, in this same Door Bumper Clear episode, another spotter, Joel Edmonds, kind of backed up Brett Griffin's story, but had perhaps a, a different interpretation of it. <laughs> but I saw Sacco come scream at uh, McReynolds. I mentioned that earlier before because you got NASCAR here, so I'm glad you're was in back in here going to calm him down, maybe to, for, to keep the host of our thing from happening. They wanted Ross to calm down. Because <clears throat> Ross, yeah. So Edmonds is referencing the truck race Friday night, which was a complete disaster. You had playoff drivers you know, taking each other out. Caution, caution, caution. It was a, a bleep show. Edmund seems to believe that the official went to Ross Chastain's spotter to try and calm him down so that you know he wouldn't you know go out there and maybe take out his frustrations on Blaine. He was just trying to prevent you know something ugly from happening, which you know is a little different. Still don't love, you know, an official telling a competitor sort of what to do or trying to calm them down, but we see this in other sports, you know, when the bench is clear in baseball, the umpires are there to try and break things up, smooth things over. So that I have much less of a problem with, but that first sort of, I don't know if accusation is the right word, that feels like a very strong word, but that first interpretation from Brett Griffin got a lot of folks' attentions, including, and I saw this guy on Twitter, Mike Ford, who works in NASCAR communications. Mike Ford refuted uh, Brett Griffin's interpretation of the story, saying in a tweet or a post to X, this is not true. The official saw the spotters of the one and the 12 getting heated during the battle for the lead. He spoke with both spotters to de-escalate any unnecessary confrontation. You calm down. At no point did he tell the one spotter to tell Chastain to move over or not race hard. Okay, so that more lines up maybe with what Joel Edmonds believes. He saw, I guess, two very different things. Again, I don't have an issue with the official going over and saying, hey guys, you know, we saw what happened Friday night when you know things got heated between championship drivers racing for the lead. Let's just, you know, calm things down. Ross Chastain can be very aggressive. Ryan Blaney can get real angry, real easy over the radio. Couple of hotheads here. Let's let's calm things down. We don't want another embarrassing moment for the sport like we saw on Friday. That I can mostly understand. It's it's the idea that the possibility that an official would tell a non-championship driver to go easy on the championship for that that's not an official's place. Hopefully that's not what happened in this case, but we do have two or three slightly different uh, stories to go off of. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Last story, speaking of that disastrous truck series race, yesterday NASCAR penalized Corey Heim for intentionally wrecking Carson Hosevar. NASCAR fined Corey Heim $12,500 and docked him 25 points, which effectively bumps him from third in the final season driver standings to fourth. Not a huge deal at the end of the day, but it is something. You know, a penalty is still a penalty. This is a tough situation. I do think NASCAR had to step in. Corey Heim choosing to door Carson Hosevar, bring out a caution with, what, three, four laps to go. That completely changed the championship picture. Grant Enfinger had the championship seemingly locked down. That caution and then the many other cautions and restarts that followed ultimately changed who won this title. It gave Ben Rhodes a shot and he took advantage of it. I get why NASCAR would step in and issue a penalty. Shoot, they penalized Denny Hamlin for walling Ross Chastain at this same track in the Cup Series earlier this spring. So I don't blame NASCAR for stepping in, but at the same time, I'm just going to be honest, I feel really bad for Corey Heim. He is getting the short end of the stick left and right, because think about what happened Friday night. Corey Heim has had a tremendous all-around season in trucks. He had the best truck Friday night in the Truck Series finale. He drove his way through the field, passed Carson Hosevar cleanly to take over the championship lead, and... He got spun out. He got wrecked for it. He did nothing wrong, yet saw his championship hopes go up in smoke because of another driver's dirty actions. And in NASCAR, there's no penalty for spinning someone out. Corey Heim is supposed to self-police. And keep this in mind, Carson Hosevar is moving up to the Cup Series next year. There's no chance for, you know, Corey Heim to wait until February to get his revenge. You know, maybe three, four, five years from now, maybe they're both in Cup and he can get his revenge, but I don't know if Corey Heim's willing to hold a grudge that long. So honestly, I don't hold it against Corey Heim that he went and retaliated 
later in that race. The only thing I don't love about it is that he damaged his own truck in the process. You know, that was kind of dumb, but I'm not going to hold this against Corey Heim. I was actually, again, while driving across the country today, I was listening to Dale Jr. Download, and Dale Jr. made a great point uh, when talking about Heim Hosevar. He said that most people in the next couple of weeks will have forgotten about Heim retaliating against Hosevar because he doesn't have a negative reputation. But Dale Jr. believes we'll all remember Carson Hosevar spinning out Corey Heim for months, if not years, because unlike Heim, Hosevar does have that reputation. Talented race car driver, plenty of speed for sure, but he's wrecked people in the past. He's made questionable moves, boneheaded moves behind the wheel several times. I understand why NASCAR felt the need to issue a penalty to Corey Heim. I think it's fair, but I do feel bad for Corey Heim in this instance, and I do not hold that move at Phoenix against him. I'm just being honest. It was ugly though. Again, we have to debate this fine line. Should NASCAR step in and police aggressive driving? To what degree should drivers be allowed to police themselves? Because that's what Heim was doing here. He was just policing himself because NASCAR refuses to, but got a penalty for it. So it's like, it's also enigmatic and ambiguous, unfortunately, but anyway, share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I will see you all again very soon. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.